Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're going to be jumping in to the MIDI controller again. So we're going to look at a next touch uh, and use it to show how to do some conditional bindings, how to flip flop some knobs. So even without going to the A layer or the B layer, how to use a knob to change what it's controlling with itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into spad.next and get started. So here we are in spad.next. As always, I'm usually on the current alpha version, 0.9.12.6.3. So this could change how you're possibly going to view your X-Touch Mini. Now I've got nothing set up with my X-Touch Mini, uh, so this is how it depicts coming in. Now, under settings, under devices, under MIDI, you're going to find that the X-Touch Mini does have extra information. But digressing, make sure you've enabled MIDI support and if you've got the X-Touch Mini and you're on the Alpha, you definitely want the input and output configuration predetermined. That way when we come to our panels, everything is good to go. Watch the other videos on the MIDI controller, uh, also about the channels and what's being used. So when we bring in our MIDI controller, so we're going to work with this knob and this knob and the buttons that are on top of them today. So for our examples, we're going to work with a couple of knobs and just flipping them between things. So what we want to do first is in spad.next, we're going to set up this knob to do both heading and speed for flight level change. Again, just doing these as examples, do whatever you want. This one, we're going to use the altitude, but we're going to use it that it can toggle between slow and fast uh, increment modes. So that will allow you to increment in hundreds, click it, and switch over to the thousands using all of the event system. So first thing we'll do is we'll come back in a little bit bigger so we can see it all, and we're going to set up our first item. So here, what we're going to do with the knob is we're going to have to set up the events. But of course, we want conditions. So what we can do is first come to the button. And again, if you click on it, you'll see that lights up. Or you can use the Lego block, enable it. And when you click on a button, it will change the focus. Just remember to undo it if you're going to touch anything else because it'll move. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add that when we press the button, and there are multiple modes now. We'll have to do an update on 9.12 button modes in a separate video. But we're going to use button pressed. And the difference here is we're going to add action. We're going to change a data value. And so we're going to create a new local variable. And we're going to call this heading speed knob. And we're going to use a number. The default value will be 0 and we only want no decimal. Now, when we do the change, we are going to want to increment it by a value of 1. We're going to enable limits. We're going to say it's a 0 and a 1. So minimum is 0, maximum is 1. Rollover will allow it to flip. So effectively, we turned it into a toggle between a 0 and a 1. Nice and easy. So now, every time we press that button, it is going to change the value from a 0 to a 1 and back. So this is how we're going to change what the knob is doing. So now, we're going to go to button number 1, because again, that's pushing on that knob. We're going to add an event button pressed, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to add an action, change data value, and we're going to create a new local variable, alt knob. 
that's a number, not a string. The value will be zero. And again, we don't need decimals. So we will create that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and increment it by a value of one, limits of zero and one, allowing rollover. So now, again, we press this and it will toggle what that value is. So now we're going to come to our first knob. We're going to add event. So when the tuner is turned clockwise, but we're going to add a condition. And so we want it that when we do our heading knob local variable, when it equals zero, we're going to add an action, send simulation event. Now we can also use the A1, uh, AS1000 um, heading bug increments and decrements, or you can do the standard sim connect heading bug increment and decrements. So these key events effectively simulate the same stuff. So we're going to go ahead and for now what we're going to use is we'll use the standard sim events. So heading bug increment. Then we're going to add an event turn counterclockwise, send simulation event, we're going to use the decrement, and again we want the condition of our heading speed knob equals zero. Now something we didn't do was we want to make sure we end processing. Uh, this is just so that if this validates it won't go checking any other conditioned elements, right? So also for our clockwise turn, we should have enabled end processing. Basically, if it's a zero, it won't also validate anything else. On that click, it'll validate the first one, and then it stops going through the list. Very helpful when you start stockpiling tons of events here, so you could have numerous values, zero, one, two, three, four, and have one knob controlling as we've shown in other videos I'm trying to keep this one simple so here we're going to go ahead now and we're going to copy all events and I'm going to paste them but I'm not going to replace so it adds them that's because I'm lazy I mean efficient so I don't have to go through all of that again so now instead of sending the heading bug so now what we're doing is we're doing the speed, right? So autopilot speed variable increment. And then also when it's a one, we're going to do the speed decrement. So that's gonna send those events and now when we toggle between these, that's what we'll get. Again, I'm very lazy, I mean efficient, so I'm going to copy all events. I'm going to go to the second knob, and I'm going to paste. But now we're going to come in, of course, and we're going to change to our local variables. Quicker way to find them, but we're going to go for the altitude knob now. So here, we're going to look for the AS1000 events. And you're going to see autopilot altitude increment and decrement by 100. So we're going to go with the 100s. And that'll be the decrement by 100. So the lower numbers. And again, I'm lazy, so I'm actually going to delete these two. And then I'm going to copy 
all events. I'm going to paste it again. And we say no so that it adds them. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and change this to a 1. Change this to the increment by 1,000. And decrement by a thousand. And there we have it. So now when we turn this knob, we should be able to increment and decrement by one hundreds. This knob is going to be turning and it's going to be adjusting our heading bug value. So let's jump back into the sim and see what we've done. So there you go, after mapping all of those items, we can now see that there goes our heading bug, spins nicely, and if we push the knob, that sets the variable, and now we, speed, we see our speed value incrementing. Back to heading. Now here on our altitude, we can go by 100s, click it, and now we can go by 1000s, so we need to get up to 11,500. And there you go. I hope you guys like this. If so, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Come along on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.